Mm-hmm. Uh, my question is about, are we allowed to live in a kafir country? And if it's yes, then how can we apply that uh, with the hadith of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Plus the ayah of, of Surah An-Nisa when Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta-A'la says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ أَنفُسِهِمْ قَالُوا فِيمَا كُنْتُمْ قَالُوا كُنَّا مُسْتَضْعَفِينَ فِي الْأَرْضِ قَالُوا أَلَمْ تَكُنْ أَرْضُ اللَّهِ وَاسِعَةً فَتُهَاجِرُ فِيهَا uh, And you know this ayah, يعني, of course, Shaykh, you know this ayah was uh, uh, revealed on the Muslims that were living in Mecca in the time of Medina. Thank you very much. Huh? No. <laughs> okay. First of all, first of all, yeah, brothers and sisters, as I have said, don't ask the wrong question. You need to ask the right question. So, if a per- if a person is starving to death. And he has no option but to eat haram food. He cannot ask the sheikh, is it allowed to eat haram food? Of course, he will say to him, what? What is he going to say? It's haram. Yes, but the sheikh should be smart, smart enough to say to him, why are you asking? Do you have any other option? And then he will say no. The other option is not to eat and then die. Then why are you asking? If there is no option, don't ask. Clear? So always ask the right question. What did you want to say? You, Allah, you jumped. Us for Allah, I'm raised Allah, so always ask the right question. Yes. Uh-huh. No, he cannot suppress it. So he yes. No no okay. Bye. So always ask the right question. Is it allowed? to eat haram meat because I have no option but to eat it. Khalas, you have no option, just eat it. So this is one thing. The question is, are we allowed to live in non-Muslim countries now while some of us have no option but to live in non-Muslim countries? And maybe some of us have the option to live in Muslim countries. This is the correct way of asking it. صح؟ because some people have no option هذا أليكس هذا يوسف طيب هذا نرويجي أبا عن جد أبوه وأمه وجده وخاله وجميع أقاربه طيب so he is indigenous Norwegian he will leave his family his father his mother his children if he has a children and so on this is one the other thing is now most of the Arab countries and Muslim countries do not accept mass immigration from anywhere in the world. Agree? You will go and live in, uh, without يعني, naming, a new AE, مثلا. طيب? You will go and live there. After some time, they will become angry of you and they will kick you out. So you cannot live there permanently because you need to have the citizenship of that country now because of the international law setup right so this has to be taken into consideration as well the third point is are we asking 250 million indian muslims to leave india and to go to saudi arabia to work there because india is a kafir country and saudi arabia is a muslim country or are we going to ask them to go and to live in Egypt because Mursi is there? <laughs> this will never happen. Agree? Can this happen? It is impossible to happen. And then we will ask 
50 million Chinese, Muslim Chinese, and 25 or whatever uh, Filipinos, and so on. So the setup now, the international setup, is different from the classical setup that we are used to. This is one thing. The other thing is uh, the ayah, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ تَوَفَّهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ ظَالِمِي أَنفُسِهِمْ Those whom the malaika, the angels are taking their lives in a state of what? In a state of zulm on themselves, oppression on themselves, which means that they are unable to practice their religion whatsoever. Okay? Or most of the uh, practices of their religion. Then the malaika will say to them, Ardullahi wasi'a. Alam takun ardullahi wasi'a. The land of Allah Jalla wa ala was wide enough for you to travel. Wasn't wide enough for you to travel? Which means that if they were to say, No, ya Allah, it was not wide enough for us to travel. They were oppressed and they did not have anywhere to go. So two things oppressed in a way that they cannot practice their religion and the second point is what huh what was the second point the land they have other options but the case now in most of the european countries we are not that oppressed to a level that we cannot practice our religion or secure our religion and the other thing is we do not have that many options to choose from to leave this kafir country and to go to a Muslim country, okay? Moreover, we know that during the time of Medina, when the Prophet Sallallahu was in Medina, some Muslims were living in Abyssinia, which was considered to be what? As a kafir country, Al-Abbas came to the Prophet Sallallahu sorry, um, uh, Ja'far ibn Abi Talib came to the Prophet وسلم, along with many of the Muhajireen uh, to Medina. They came on which year? No, seventh year. After what? After Khaybar. Ja'far came and uh, after the conquer or the opening of Khaybar, the Prophet وسلم, said, I don't know, okay. Uh, to become happy for what? Is it for the return of Ja'far or for the uh, conquer of Khaybar? So the Prophet وسلم, allowed them to live in Medina, in Abyssinia, while it was considered as Dar al-Kufr. While Dar, Dar al-Islam was there because in Abyssinia they were practicing their religion and they were not oppressed to that level. Okay? Moreover, many companions uh, traveled to Kuffar countries uh, during the, after the death of the Prophet وسلم, in order to what? Uh, to propagate Al-Islam. Yeah. So, this is the answer, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. That's it. Jazakumullah khair. Barakallah feekum. Subhanakallahum wa bihamdika. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu alayka.